This is my review and discussion for Superman Lois Season 2, Episode 3, which had a very bizarre ending. Good joke, right? That's why you subscribe to the channel. And we also have an interview with Superman himself, Tyler Hawken, who breaks down that bizarre ending. Let's get into it. What's going on Superman Lois fans, welcome back to the channel, I'm your host The Viking, make sure you give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for a brand new video every single day. Look, Superman Lois continues to be a great show, not just a superhero show, not just a Superman show, but a great show that has consistency. The budget for the show is unbelievable, the VFX, the cinematography, the directing, the acting, the writing, everything for me about this show is top notch and week after week, season after season now, it continues to knock it out of the park and this episode was really enjoyable. Not just the ending because it was WTF, oh my god, what is happening, but because every single character in the show is respected with a very interesting, compelling storyline which is great to see because in many shows they cut away to side characters b and c list characters and you just don't care for them because you don't care for the story that they're going through but here with superman and lois you care about lana line running for mayor you care about the relationship between jordan and sarah you care about jonathan you care about every single character that's in this show because that comes from the writing team. I think they're doing a fantastic job. And episode 3 was usually enjoyable with twists and turns. And I cannot wait to see where this season goes next in episode 4. But this episode right here titled The Thing in the Mines. Many of us were wondering what was in the mines. And the showrunner basically said it was Doomsday. So we were all prepared for Doomsday. Now, if you've seen Batman v Superman, Doomsday was one of the big villains in that. And then you were thinking that we were going to get something similar to that in Superman and Lois. But this episode just threw a curveball and it wasn't Doomsday whatsoever, which we will get into. Okay, so we're going to recap the entire episode, give our thoughts, and eventually we will get to that bizarre ending. Okay, I'll stop using that. Okay, this comes from the ReviewGeek.com and they do an awesome recap of the episode. The Thing in the Minds. Episode 3 of Superman Lost Season 2 begins with Superman tumbling out of the sky, crash landing on the floor after being caught off his game. The headaches are getting worse and he's trying to hone in on the signal from the mines which is worsening him. Clark can't tell Anderson either, leaving him with no other choice but to lean on John, encouraging him to go and investigate the mines to find out what's happening. Meanwhile, Jordan continues to reel over the situation with Sarah. Jonathan spins things around though, telling his brother it's good that she was honest and suggests he do the same thing regarding his powers. I mean, it's not quite the same thing as cheating, but you can understand his way of thinking. So Jordan is left to contemplate whether to tell her about his powers. When Clark finds out what Jordan intends to do, the pair end up arguing outside. Jordan mentions how he wants to marry Sarah, causing Clark to snap, shouting, No, you don't, with a menacing growl. This catches Clark completely off guard, unsure exactly what's going on with him. At school, things end up escalating further. Jonathan learns that his girlfriend Candace has been selling drugs to his rival on the football team, eventually leading to a fight between the two. Clark eventually jumps in, but once again he loses control of his temper, aiming his heat vision into his hands in the locker room is the only way to stop it. It appears that whatever is going on at the mines, the anger of this creature is being channeled through Superman. For now, Clark and the gang are left with little in the ways of answers, something they hope to remedy through John's investigation. John heads up to the construction site and is taken down into the depths, where he finds spatters of blood. Of course, he lets his guard down and he's knocked out by the woman in charge. Elsewhere, Lana prepares for her big campaign drive, 
but she's nervous. She needs to be seen as a genuine rival to the current mayor and that's problematic when people don't trust her. After what happened with Morgan Edge, her promise of zero interest loans falls on the deaf ears at the meeting later on that day. Back home, Lana ends up talking to Sarah, who admits she's not embarrassed or ashamed of cheating on Jordan. Lana reassures her that things will work out okay. So in order to get her mind off things, Sarah encourages Lana to do a vlog about her life. The thing is, the questions she's given are all pertaining to her being mayor. With Sam back in town, Lois has a heart to heart with him about how she's feeling. Sam's aware of the alley incident having read the article for himself he apologizes to her for being a bad father according to sam he didn't want to lose them but he was never there for his girls when they needed him off the back of all of this sam decides to help fight for what's right he's managed to set up a meetup with her sister lucy sam does warn however that she needs a delicate touch Speaking of touching, Clark heads down to the mines and ends up going toe to toe with the creature lurking in its depths, which comes crashing out into the open. John is there too, but as Superman knocks half this man's mask off, he gets a good look at himself. This strange doppelganger has symbols on his face and glowing blue eyes, so nope, it's not Doomsday, it's something else all too. Together. That evening, Jordan heads over to Sarah. He sits down to talk with her, handing over a necklace that used to belong to his grandmother. I love you, Sarah, he eventually says, a man that one kiss won't change the way he feels about her. Meanwhile, Jonathan also has a chat with Candace. Instead of dissuading her from selling or getting mixed up with drugs, he actually wants her to sell some to him so he can get a better competitive edge. As the episode closes out, Lois awaits meeting Lucy, only she doesn't show up. Instead, it's Ali who appears in the diner. Just before they talk, we cut across to the doppelganger Superman once more. As he arrives at the Ice Fortress, as the final credits roll across the screen, the logo for Superman Lois is reversed in a neat little touch. So there was a lot in that episode of Superman Lois episode 3, but the OMG moment was the reveal that it was Bizarro and not Doomsday because the showrunner hinted hugely to Doomsday and it ended up not being him whatsoever. I was shocked and it's a doppelganger of Tyler Hoechlin's Superman and if you listen very closely you actually can't understand what this Bizarro Superman is saying because everything that he says is in reverse. Some people on Twitter on YouTube got the clips and they reversed it and you can listen to what he had to say. And when Superman is looking at himself, Tyler Hoechlin, the real Superman, is looking at the Bizarro Superman, Bizarro says, leave me alone. And then when he ends up in the Fortress of Solitude, he says, home. So that's very interesting to see how that's going to develop. Is this Bizarro Superman evil? Does he want to kill this Superman? Does he want to take over the world? What is his intentions? Why is he here? And why does he look exactly like Tyler Hoechlin's Superman? Is this done from experiments or Lex Luthor or somebody like that? I'm not too sure, but it's very intriguing for the rest of the season. Now, throughout the episode, we have Lana and her mayor stuff. I expect her to be mayor of Smallville. she probably have some bumps in the road, but that will be resolved by the season end. Also, Sarah and Jordan are now back together, so that's a good relationship there. But then Jordan wanted to tell Sarah that he basically is Superman's son. He's got Superman abilities. And rightfully so, Clark is very annoyed at this because you're 15, you think you're in love now. But a good example of this is Tyler Hawkins' Superman, Clark Kent, was in love with Lana Lang. And then that didn't work out. And then he met Lois Lane, which could happen to Jordan. He could meet somebody else once he goes to college or grows up a little bit. So I can understand why Clark doesn't want to tell her. Not only is it putting Sarah in danger, but it puts everybody else in danger as well. The more people know who Superman is. So I understand that fully there as well. But then Superman getting these headaches and these outbursts was very interesting. He was scaring his kids. And Tyler Hawking for me is a great Superman. He's doing a fantastic job proving a lot of people wrong. We had Lois and her dad, of course. Gen well, he's not General Lane anymore, of course. He retired. And that relationship there is still rocky. That needs to be resolved. You know, it really does. Because, you know, Lois's mother left the family and then there was kind of 
it wasn't that best of terms with their dad and then Lucy of course she went off and joined a cult and it looks like she's going to come back into the show as well so that's an interesting side story there too we've also got John Henry Irons and his daughter Natalie who are going through their own thing as well because they've come to this planet that's not theirs and Natalie is in fear of her dad being killed because he's just a man in a metal suit but it looks like she's going to be okay with it as long as she can build him a proper suit to fight in and I really like the actor that plays John Henry Irons I really like the character and I love him being in every single episode now this season I know that the show are kind of trolled us about Doomsday, it wasn't Doomsday, it's Bizarro. But that's actually kind of interesting as well. And actually a pretty cool thing. Because in a world where movies and shows come out. It's kind of like you know what's going to happen before you get to see with all the spoilers out there. And I like how the showrunner put us down this direction of it's Doomsday, it's Doomsday. But then you go and you look at who's underneath the suit. And it's not Doomsday, it's Bizarro. And you're like, oh my god, that's... I did not think that was going to happen. That's pretty cool. So I did like that. But we have an interview with Superman himself, Tyler Hoechlin, who does talk about this ending to Superman and Lois. And he does reveal that it is bizarro. But this comes from TVLine.com. And this is the headline for this article. Superman and Lois finally confirms what's in the minds. Tyler Hoechlin reacts to the really cool reveal. We finally know... What's making that ruckus in the minds? And it's not what, or rather who, most fans expected. Tuesday's episode of Superman and Lois finally revealed the identity of the thing in the minds following its escape from the underground. The mystery creature got into a scuffle with the Man of Steel, during which we discovered that it's actually Whitford Bizarro Superman. Don't Though Bizarro has taken many forms over the years, he's generally depicted as an inverted version of Superman, hence the reversed symbol on his chest. Bizarro traditionally takes on a villainous role in his various incarnations, but he also has a certain anti-hero quality about him. Okay, so let's get into this interview with Tyler Hoechlin, Superman himself. Here's a question. As soon as I realized that I was looking at Bizarro, I released an audible gasp. What was your reaction? Tyler Hoechlin had this to say. I remember the conversation I had with Ton Helbin, our amazing showrunner. I was insanely excited about it when he told me. With TV, there's always the fear that sometimes you'll get locked into doing the same thing over and over to the point where you feel like it's Groundhog Day. This was a really cool chance to do something different. An opportunity to play on set and really let go. Question, and now you'll be pulling double duty. Well, we call it triple duty here, but yes, I'll be doing a little mano a mano with myself for sure. Question, actually, if you count Clark, Superman, Bizarro, and Superman from John's Earth, you've actually played four roles, and he says the list is growing. Question, did you get a chance to see a cut of this episode? I imagine it must be weird watching yourself fighting yourself. Tyler Hoechlin had this to say, I actually decided last year when we were shooting the pilot that I wasn't going to watch any of the episodes. It was just a decision I made with the character to make it easier to go into work and continue to commit to what I'm doing. I've told directors and producers that they can let me know if there's anything I'm doing that's not working or if I need to go in a different direction, but I'm not going to be watching any of the cuts, so I won't be able to spot anything. For me, it's just a way of not judging it and being so critical with what it is. There may be something that I don't like seeing myself doing, but if it works for the character on the show, that's the important thing. It really doesn't matter what I think. Maybe when the series is wrapping up at some point in the future, I'll consider going back and watching them. For now, I'm going to let Clark and Superman live unimpeded by my opinion of them. Question. Okay, back to Bizarro. How much of this look is done with makeup versus added later in post? He had this to say. There's a bit of a mix going on of practical and what they can do with VFX these days, which is amazing. The moment you don't see yourself in the mirror is a really freeing experience. You realize that no one else is seeing you either. They're seeing this character, so it gives you the freedom to be a little bit more cavalier and just let go. That was really cool. Our makeup here and wardrobe teams collectively did a great job with this question now that we know it was bizarro in there should we be putting all this talk of doomsday to bed was that an official misdirect he said this when it's a movie it's a lot easier to say yes it was this 
or no, it was that as an actor. On these shows, I never want to say anything definite because I don't know. There are certain things they keep from us too. I think it is what it is at that moment, but who knows what it leads to. Only Todd and the writers have that answer. Question, we rarely see Clark in any sort of extreme, so watching him explode at the boys this week was a lot. How intense was that to film? He says this, there are certain things with Superman that also bleed into Clark. We really are playing with things that haven't been dealt with by this character. Moments like that always stand out to me. Like Clark would never do that. It's not who he is and it's not who Superman is. He has the patience we all wish we had. So to see him lash out in those moments when you first read it on the page, you think, how far does this go? Why is this happening? A lot of questions go into that because it's so out of character for him. Question, it's been fun watching you and Team Wolf co-star Ian Bone together again. How has that experience been? He had this to say, it's been so much fun. I call him Boo. <laughs> Boo and I have been really good buddies for a long time now. So to have him up here and to be across from each other on the screen has been fun. Squaring off against him is always great. We hold it together during the takes, but it's usually a laugh fest afterwards. He's a great character to play this season. I'm excited for everyone to see where Anderson goes. We're really lucky to be able to do this. So that was a pretty cool interview with Superman Tyler Hoechlin. He confirms that it is Bizarro and it looks like Bizarro is going to be the villain for season 2 of Superman and Lois. Doomsday might come down the line, but right now it's Bizarro. We all thought it was Doomsday and the showrunner kind of pulled their leg a little bit, but that was cool because last night the reaction online was insane because people were like, oh my god, it's not Doomsday, it's actually Bizarro. And that's what you want. You want great talk around a show like Superman and Lois. And that's what last night's episode did. So I'm looking forward to episode 4. Usually I want to see more of Bizarro. It's pretty cool that Tyler Hoechlin gets to play a good Superman. In the reverse version of Superman as well. And he's played a number of different Supermans. Which is pretty cool as well. Evil Superman. He's been on Supergirl. You know the crossover events. So he's played this character a lot. And for me I think he's one of the best Supermans of all time. In my opinion. I really like him. Especially since Henry Cavill can't be the character right now. But as the season goes on. I'm looking forward to seeing more of John Henry Irons. His new suit. You got the stuff with the boys as well. Lucy Lane. Lois' sister will be brought into it. She joined that call. So that's going to be an interesting storyline. We've also got you know, Lana Lyne. Lana Lang Cushing going to be mayor of Smallville, which I expect. So there's a lot going for this season that's very, very interesting. But guys, what was your thoughts on Superman Lois Episode 3? Have you been enjoying this season as much as last season? What did you think of the twist that it's not Doomsday, it's actually Bizarro? It caught a lot of us off guard big time, but that's pretty cool, I think, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week for the review and breakdown of Superman Lois Episode 4. And if you like other movies, we do brand new reviews, breakdowns, breaking news videos on the channel every single day. So make sure you subscribe for that so you don't miss a thing about the world of movies and TV. Guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.